Farmer Dan, the wannabe Texas gardener. <laughs> So welcome to the uh, Wannabe Texas Gardener channel. I'm Farmer Dan and today we are planting up the garden. Uh, my lovely wife has assisted me, so Farmer Joanna is behind the camera today. So in our first little box up here in the front, we've got our little 4x4 box. This is going to be for our pepper plants. There's a mixture of multicolored bell peppers and uh, jalapeno, mild jalapeno peppers in there. Um, some of them look a little puny, but we're going to see if we can revive them. If they don't make it, that's okay. It's just all an experiment anyway. So with some of the uh, bell peppers, they look pretty good. So that's the main ones that we're trying to get. Up here in this front box, um, we have a mixture of tomatoes. Now with this being the uh, beginning gardening type channel, uh, what we didn't do, what I didn't do whenever I planted my seeds was mark every cell. Um, so whenever I up potted them, I didn't have enough plant markers to know what type of tomato was in each of the uh, up pots that I did. So now it's a mystery tomato garden. Um, but there are tiny toe, tommy toe. tommy toe, cherry tomatoes. There's two of those somewhere in here. We have San Marzano tomatoes. We have beefsteak tomatoes and we have homestead tomatoes. Um, so it's kind of mixed and intertwined between this box um, and there's also some planted on the other side in the same area of the box, just on the other side of the box. Um, so that's what we planted today. We also have our update on our squash. We've got some nice pretty squash blossoms going on here. Here if we can get around. Um, so this one is a female because it has the fruit. And this blossom is a male blossom, which doesn't have any fruit. So you need, a, you need both of them to, to produce fruit. So the male pollinates the female, and that's what produces our fruit. We have little blossoms here. Here's a male blossom there. Um, here's a female blossom with a male blossom underneath it. So we'll start to be getting squash fruit off of this in the next few weeks, hopefully, as they grow bigger. We only have five squash plants. Uh, and then in the front parts here, like we talked about in the other videos, we're going to have green beans. Uh, we did contender bush beans this year. We'll see how those play out. Um, we do have a place where we could have hanged a trellis and did some pole beans, but we didn't do that this year. Uh, so I think there's 10 bean plants, uh, five on each side or maybe 12. I have to look at my garden layout, but there's the same amount of bean plants on each side. And then we have more tomatoes. Um, again, they're just sparsely put in here. This little guy, we're gonna see if we can revive him. Don't know if we can or not, but if he makes it great, if he doesn't, um, that's okay. We'll, do, we'll take what we can get. And in our front box here, we've got our onions, and then there's two rows of carrots. And then we have one row of head cabbage. Um, these little green sprouts that are coming up are not vegetables. Don't know what they are. Uh, it looks like a clover of some sort, but it's probably from all the trees and stuff that we have blowing some little seeds in here and they're growing. So we'll pick those out as we can. But we got three quarter inches of rain over the weekend. Um, we were out of town on spring break. So we had a cold front that blew in. Thank goodness we didn't plant before we left because we'd have had, probably had some bad outcomes there, but the squash made it through. So we're gonna go over and look at our figs. We have some nice little fig, uh, some fig leaves growing up. So we're gonna pause for a minute till we get over to the fig One trees. One of our Celeste fig trees, when we purchased it, we purchased them as three foot, four foot range uh, fig trees from Womack Farms um, up in North, west texas um 
when we got it it was pretty much completely bare there was one fig fruit that it had on there and it has since fallen off uh, we had a freeze a couple weekends ago maybe three weekends now where we wrapped it up and it kind of knocked the fruit off but we started we have really good fig um, fig leaves coming out new growth coming out so that's exciting even more on the one on the other side He's not as tall. He's probably about the three foot range, but he's got really good growth coming out. So we're excited about that one. Um, we probably won't get any fruit this year. If we do, it'll just be enough to come out and snack on while we're picking the garden, but that's okay. We expect the growth to come later on, but we're, I'm really excited that they're doing as well as they are considering the type of soil that we have. Um, we have, a lot of clay in the soil so whenever we planted them we really had to amend the soil to make enough drainage so that it wouldn't pool water underneath it and kill the roots um, so the the hole that we dug was almost as big as the box that they're in and probably about two feet deep uh, <clears throat> and i mixed some of the clay in with the same type of bed mix that i put into the raised bed so it's got vermiculite in there and it's got different composts and um, it's got peat moss and so all the stuff that we put in the in the raised bed which you can see in one of our other videos uh is mixed in with the clay that i took out of here and then put it all in and planted the fig trees so that there's plenty of nutrients and good drainage so we don't drain the roots and then behind us over here we've got our start of a flower garden i think these are hydrangeas hydrangeas uh, they're blue and purple. And what I found out with hydrangeas, and I don't know how true this is, but I saw this on um, this old house, um, the, the horticulture guy on this old house. The darker you want the color of your hydrangeas, the more acid you put in the ground. So the lighter they are, the more alkaline the soil. If you want them really dark red color, then you put um, more of an acidic soil base. So, you know, that's going by this old house. That's not Farmer Dan. So you can try it out if you want to. And then next to it, we've got a couple of honeysuckles that we grew. The point of these is to attract honey, hummingbirds and butterflies. Um, put up a rudimentary trellising system out of some, the, the other uh, part of the tomato trellising that I was gonna put on the raised bed. So you can see that video that's gonna be coming up as well. Um, so we'll put a link down in the description of that video. So you can see where I got that from and the trellising that we're gonna use for our tomatoes and how we're gonna string them up. Um, we got two honeysuckles, uh, so hopefully they'll grow up nice and pretty and attract some hummingbirds and some butterflies. And then we got another hydrangea at the end there. Um, kind of put the same type of soil in where, the, where I planted the plants, not necessarily throughout the whole bed, um, but the plan is to come back over and put some mulch down once it settles into the ground and such. So we'll see how that works out. And then we've got some wild blackberries that we trellised up that just grew out from underneath the pine uh, pine leaves that fell. And then we have our own blackberries that we planted on the other side. So if you see the propane tank and then there's the fence just on the other side of the fence, we have some blackberries. I'd show you those. Oh, we can go walk over there and I'll show you what we got. All right, everybody. So we are back over here. I came over where the blackberry bushes are. Um, and we really, I really wasn't expecting much to be over here other than the trellising system. But when I got closer to the ground, I found we actually have a sprout, if you will, or a, uh, a floricane of some sort, a cane part of the blackberry coming up. So I'm going to flip around so you can see it. All right. And there it is. So we planted five root starts of blackberry bushes um, and we got those from Womack Farms too. And it is just now starting, to, one of them has broken ground right there. Uh, the other four have not that I can tell, but I haven't gotten down with the microscope to see if we broke ground or anything, but we'll see. So we do, here's our trellising system that we put up. Uh, it's basically two T posts. And then there is a double wire about 18 inches from the ground and then a double wire 18 inches higher from that one. So approximately 36 inches from the ground. And they're separated by these little homemade separators all the way down. 
and the goal is is the canes grow up to bring them up through the trellis so they don't fall over um, and to trim them back to the canes so they'll be able to go across and up and across so they produce more berries so that's the idea anyways that's what i saw on youtube so i'm going to try it out and see so that's really all we got for you today um just a quick update don't want to go too long so uh, you won't be bored with a lot of banjo music today so we'll just see we'll just keep you updated on what's going on around the farm or around the garden rather uh and hopefully we'll have some squash to pick in the next couple of weeks our tomatoes will be growing up and flowers will flourish and birds will be flying through and all that good jazz so uh, thanks for watching today's video like and subscribe and all that good youtube jargon and uh this is farmer dan signing off for the wannabe texas gardener